We're here at the Public Library, meeting with uh, legislators who are running for office this year. Uh, Gaylor and China are both uh, going to be interviewed on our website. Please join us at westhempstedecho.com. Legislator, please tell us why you are seeking a sixth term and what, what are some of your accomplishments so far in the legislature and, and what your plans are to help the people of West Hempstead. Well, first and foremost, it's always good to be in West Hempstead. My name is Legislator Bill Gaylor and uh, West Hempstead is a new community uh, after redistricting. So uh, the 14th district comprises West Hempstead, all, almost all of West Hempstead, um, up, to the, up to the Hempstead Turnpike, all of Lakeview, uh, all of Malvern, all of Limbrook, uh, the incorporated village of East Rockaway and parts of Oceanside now. A small little bit in Valley Stream, but that's the new, uh, the new district after redistricting. This is, I'm seeking a fifth term as a legislator um, and if I'm elected on Tuesday. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done. I've been at this uh, business now for eight years. Uh, we've worked extremely well in, in, the, uh, in the areas where uh, my constituency is, and uh, uh, we're focused on roads, public safety, our major issues, holding the line on taxes. I've never raised, uh, I've never voted for an increase in taxes. Uh, we like to keep our fees down where possible. And uh, we want to make this still the safest and best place to live, work, and play, raise a family. Public safety has to be the top issue for everyone in the community. We're living in very difficult times. We saw the other night here in the neighborhood there were some bias incidents. Do you feel the police coverage that we have is sufficient, or, or do you think there should be no new allocation of new resources here? Uh, well, no. The the police have indicated that they have all the resources that they need. And as you know, we just went through the, the budget process and in a uh, bipartisan, uh, unanimous way, we voted to, uh, which was a piece of legislation I introduced actually, uh, to increase the size of the police force uh, and add a few district attorney uh, uh, prosecutors uh, to next year's budget so that we could uh, continue to uh, meet all the needs uh, that the police commissioner and the police department require. So uh, it's all about back in the blue. We give them everything they ask for. Um, they've not come back and said they needed any more than what we've given them. Uh, but yeah, if the need arises and they need more, uh, this legislature will, uh, and I can assure you the majority uh, in the legislature will give the police department everything they need. And there are, you're right, there have been some incidents uh, of recent here in West Hempstead. Uh, those perpetrators were uh, caught very quickly by the police department, did an outstanding job tracking them down um, and bringing them to justice, and they'll be dealt with uh, as the criminal justice system uh, deems fit, obviously. And hopefully it'll be uh, the swift and, and harsh penalties, but uh, we leave that up to the, the courts. Costs are rising uh, for everyone. Uh, we're already in one of the highest tax uh, districts in the counties in the country. What can we do to make the life more affordable for, for taxpayers? So we focus, you know, part of my, my focus has been since day one is focusing on the, uh, uh, the housing opportunities for our seniors and as well as our younger folks coming out of, coming out of college. We've got to get uh, kids out of the basements of their parents' house. To, uh, the recent uh, reports indicate that, uh, that kids are staying longer at home because they just can't afford to live here. So we've got to change that by building up our downtowns, developing those areas, transit-oriented type development around the railroad station so so uh, people can get on the trains, uh, no need for a car. Um, it's a lot of benefits to be had there. And we've seen some great projects going uh, going up over the last um, uh, few years, uh, both here in West Hempstead but uh, throughout the entire district. So currently we've got a 202-unit uh, apartment house going up right at the railroad station in Limbrook. Valley Stream, same, same, same projects, same types of projects. So there's going to be some development here, and there has been development here in West Hempstead, and we need to keep pushing for that. So, so I say there's, a, there's work to be done. I mean there's work to be done. But you're right. Uh, people want to, want to live in, a, in an affordable place, and uh, we have to continue to do what we can do to, to keep costs down. You know, we're blessed. Nassau County is the, still the safest county in the nation for its size. Um, we have an outstanding police department. Uh, DPW at the, both the county, the town, uh, and the local areas do extremely well trying to maintain the roads. You know, and, that, and we realize these roads were built at a time when uh, 
the populations were much less, okay? Your population, for despite everybody saying people are moving out of uh, New York or Nassau County because they, it's, it's unaffordable, the population's actually increasing. All right, we're approaching one, we're over 1.4 million now. People want to live here because this is a great community to, to live in because it is safe, it is, it is affordable, uh, and it's just, a, it's just a darn good place to raise a family. All right, and so we see, see a lot of folks coming from the city. Uh, they, want to, they want to be in this part of Nassau County, um, and uh, my job will continue to, to keep it as, uh, as it is the best place to live, really, well, in the county. One last question I'll ask is that we're living in very, very partisan times. Uh, it seems like both parties are just being very obstructionist against each other. There's, there's not as much bipartisan feeling, even on the most important issues. In the legislature, the Republicans have the majority, mm -hmm. right? What can we do to get more cooperation between the parties where they put the good of the public before the good of the parties? So, um, you know, for eight years, I've, I've uh, developed a lot, of, a lot of good relationships. So. Um, both on the Republican side, on the Democrat side. Um, from the Republican perspective, I work extremely well with the town of Hampstead and, and my colleagues at the legislature uh, to get things done. Same with the, the local um, uh, villages and whatnot. Um, but I can assure you that each, each one of us in the legislature, whether Republican or Democrat, uh, come together on the important issues. And this is why you saw just uh, this week um, we voted on the budget, and it was a unanimous vote. All the Republicans, all the Democrats came together to support uh, the budget, uh, support the amendment that I proposed, um, and, and uh, give uh, County Executive Bruce Blakeman and the Commissioner of Police all those resources that they do need to continue to do a great job. So we do work together well. There is a lot of, uh, uh, of debate that goes on at the federal level and, and a lot of animosity maybe, and we see partisan politics playing out. Uh, but when it comes down to the important things, I work very well with uh, the minority. What is the fiscal condition of the county? You think we're in good shape heading into the new budget? Absolutely. Year? We've been on a great tra trajectory over the last um, eight years. Uh, the, last, the last two years in particular, we've taken a lot of steps. We, we, we as a Republican majority, cut proposed uh, in, and planned tax increases that the prior administration uh, had put in effect. We've got a glide path now where overtime uh, for the police department is coming down while the number of uniformed officers is going up rather quickly. Uh, the, the size of the, uh, the academy classes uh, is, is good. We're, we're running them through as quick as possible to keep uh, more police coming on uh, to offset those that are going out uh, for retirements. So, um, yeah, things are, things are good. Things are really good. Legislator Bill Gaylor, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. And look forward to seeing the results on Tuesday. I do too. Thank you very much. Jake Shiner, Democrat, running for the 14th Legislative District, the Nassau County yes, sir. Legislature. You're a uh, challenger uh, going up against an incumbent. It's hard necessarily, uh, it's usually pretty hard to uh, unseat an incumbent. Why do you think you'll be able to pull it off? Well, I can, first of all, Adam, thank you for having me. Much appreciated. And I think we could pull it off because my message, which is a common sense, middle of the road message, is one that is focused on local quality of life that people here in the community care about, right? Now, I've knocked on over 3,000 doors in this campaign. By the end of it, we'll have eclipsed 4,000 doors that I've personally knocked on, where I've gone door to door, speaking to voters, having that personal interaction. That's why we're gonna win this race. I'm not taking anyone's vote or anyone's support for granted, I'm going out and I'm earning it by knocking on doors, by calling voters, and by being constantly out there. Now, my biggest priorities for West Hempstead here, as many of you know, have been adding increased traffic safety initiatives on roads like Hempstead Avenue, Woodfield Road, Nassau Boulevard, and Dogwood, where we have a community where there's been, we have a, a, a walking community, a Shomer Shabbos community, where so many people have been uh, run over and killed, sadly, in many instances. And yet our current leadership has failed us on this issue. And I've been speaking out about this throughout the campaign. Tell us how the current leadership has failed us in this issue. Well, it took how many decades to get just a traffic light up at the corner of Linden and Woodfield Road? You know, this is, not, this is human life. What is more important than protecting human life and protecting the safety of our residents, right? You know, it goes beyond just having a traffic light. It involves having other traffic safety initiatives, whether they be four-way stop signs or speed bumps or speed cameras or slow down signs. 
These are not costly items that we could use to actually protect people. So that's been one of my biggest priorities for West Hempstead. Another big issue I've been focused on is Echo Park Pool has reopened, but at a 76% increase in the seasonal membership, which just isn't right. So I've been speaking out on these local quality of life issues, you know, increasing uh, police presence around our shuls and houses of worship, increasing police patrol in Jewish areas. Just last week, we had Reppets and Kelmer's house get hit with a vicious anti-Semitic attack, right? We had a robbery, an armed robbery recently at the dry cleaner. So is the police pr presence in this area sufficient to patrol strength or does something else need to be done? We need a stronger police presence. We need more cops driving around on patrol, protecting our community. Do we have the money to add more cops? Do we have the, the numbers, the forces to add more cops? Yes, the Nassau County Legislature actually just passed a budget amendment to add more police officers. I would actually advocate for the addition of 110 more police officers here in Nassau County, which is something, a piece of legislation that was proposed last year that sadly was shut down. So we need a stronger police presence to protect our schools, and we need to have more police on the beat protecting our communities. Costs are up, uh, mortgage uh, rates are up, homes are up. Uh, we're already in the, one of the highest, if not the highest uh, counties in the, in the country in terms of property tax. What can we do to make this area more affordable so that young people just starting out can afford to live here? Yeah, look, we all know somebody that has moved to Florida or North Carolina or South Carolina or Texas, right? A big part of why I'm running is to ensure that my generation and my parents' generation can still continue to afford to live here, right? I want to make sure that my kids and grandkids can still live here and families can stay together. This is a big issue that is on the top of the minds of many folks here, right? So my biggest focus is on affordability. You know, we have a property tax assessment system that is broken here in Nassau County. And I think that is in large part due to the fact that we have property tax firms like Maidenbaum and others that are completely ripping people off by charging 50% every time they go to grieve their taxes. Now, it's no coincidence that my opponent and others on the Nassau County Legislature happen to be among the largest recipients in campaign contributions from these tax cert firms. They have a vested interest in keeping this system broken so that they can profit off of it while the politicians lie in their pockets and we the people end up getting hurt off of it. And another big focus of mine on affordability is ending price gouging by utility companies like Liberty Water. Liberty Water is acting in a, in a predatory manner in many cases charging folks twice as much. I was just knocking on doors on Walker Place here in West Hempstead, and there's a lady that lives on her own, and she's paying almost twice as much as her neighbor as a family of four living right next door to her. Now that's just not right. And we need leaders who are gonna speak up on these local quality of life affordability issues and actually fight for them and get to work. And I've shown that throughout my campaign, and I promise to continue doing that once I get elected and once I have the opportunity to serve starting in January. Politics these days is getting so ugly. You know, we asked your opponent as well, the, the partisanship, the obstruction between the parties, uh, the inability to work together for the common good. What could be done about that? Especially in the county, you're gonna be working with the, uh, if you were elected with a majority of Republicans. What could be done to make people work together more and have the interests of the people first and foremost and not party politics? Well, I've shown throughout my career the ability to work across the aisle and work in a bipartisan fashion. I worked on Capitol Hill for Congressman Tom Suozzi, who's a conservative, common sense Democrat, who's focused on, again, these nonpartisan issues. I'm very proud of my work there. As a director at APAC, American Israel Public Affairs Committee, I worked with both Democrats and Republicans across the aisle right, to help strengthen and secure the U.S.'s relationship and the amount of $3.8 billion annually for the Jewish state and $500 million of which went to missile defense funding systems, life-saving systems like Iron Dome, which sadly is uh, especially relevant today. Um, and I intend to take that approach and that style of governing and working across party lines when I get elected to the Nassau County Legislature because the politics in this country have become so toxic but when it comes to a local office like this one, county legislator, it's about ensuring that 
you know, we have new roads and infrastructure, that people feel safe in their neighborhoods, and lastly, that people can still afford to live here. These are not Democratic or Republican issues. These are black and white issues that affect everybody all across the board, regardless of your party affiliation. I intend not to get involved in the partisan rhetoric on the far left, which I've very strongly condemned, as well as the hyper-partisan rhetoric on the far right. I'm focused on governing in the middle and delivering real results that could actually help people and improve their everyday quality of life. Speaking of politics getting ugly, there was an incident last week. You were accused of taking a lawn sign of your opponent, replacing with one of your own. It actually became a police matter. What is your message to the voters about that incident? I was the subject of a malicious, vicious, and dirty political hit job against me. This only happened because this was an unexpectedly close race. I knocked on a very friendly homeowner's door who gave me full permission to place my sign and remove the opponent's sign because there was a lot of signs, as you may know, a lot of signs are just being put out in the neighborhood without homeowner's permission, right? I was given permission by the homeowner, and all of a sudden they had this sudden change of heart and decided to use that against me in a political hit. The question that I have for you, the public, to consider is, if I didn't have permission, why would I go in broad daylight ring the person's ring doorbell camera, knowing full well I was on video being recorded, and then proceed to swap out the signs. The second question to consider is, why did this come out six days before an extremely close election? This is nothing but a vicious, malignant attempt to undermine the strong campaign that we're running and to undermine the fact that I've knocked on over 3,000 doors, over 1,000 right here in West Hempstead alone. Jake Shiner, Democrat, running for the Nassau County... Common Cal sense Democrat running for Nassau County Legislator. Right for Nassau County Legislator, thank you for joining us. Looking forward to seeing the results on Tuesday. Thank you so much.